But Cool Jaja is a cultural force in the Final Fantasy XIV community. The game's director said he would have never guessed this would happen. The whole development team is surprised by how popular this character has become. So let's explore his role in the Dawn Trail narrative and how the journey changes him. Be warned, there will be spoilers through Dawn Trail's main story quest in 7.0. My name is Stout, and I hope you enjoy. I have to be honest, the early story quests in Dawn Trail don't do Bakul Jaja any favors. We learn he's one of four claimants to the throne, and it's not because of his ties to the Dawn Servant. Bakul Jaja won a recent martial tournament to earn his entry. He's not a popular choice. He makes his grand departure to a mix of cheers and jeers, and it's clear that not even all of his own kind like him. Bakul Jaja is a rarity among Mamulja because of his two heads. That means he's the best hope for the Mamulja and the city of Mamuk. He is the city's champion, the so-called blessed siblings and elevated chosen. Bakul Jaja's first interaction with Wuklamat paints him as a racist bully. He talks down to her, calling Wook a house cat and a third-rate promise. He believes the right of succession that Galul Jaja is using is a waste of time. The throne should be his by ancient tradition alone. He says this contest is presided over by cowards. It's also mentioned that he doesn't even have a plan for how to lead a place as large as Tural. If he wins, the Mamulja will be the ruling class of Tural. He will drive the weaklings out of the capital city and invite his kin to live there instead. He describes Tuliolal as a rotten jungle that must be purged. He's only concerned with his victory. Bakul Jaja wants the throne because it's a throne, and that is all that matters. He even does something only a Saturday morning cartoon villain would do. He steps on your lunch. His introduction goes to great lengths to make us despise him, and it definitely works. Alize says he's someone that cannot be allowed to rule. Bakul Jaja's over-the-top villainy grows with each step of the contest. His cheating knows no bounds. Let's make a quick list. In Okano, he avoids the problem of the feet of reeds altogether. He's not concerned with failed crops and the low spirits of the Hanuhanu. No, he will take what he needs by force. The Blessed Chosen clashes with Wuklamat and easily overpowers her to try to take a repaired festival float. He only gives up because of the Warrior of Light's intervention. And later, he steals a vial of a solution to heal the crops from Second Promise Kona and earns his keystone for it. Bakul Jaja also resorts to cheap shots to try to stop us in the first dungeon, although he's not the only one. He tries to shake down Zeralja in the feet of the Potsworn, although the latter knocks him out with a satisfying gut punch. Bakul Jaja also hires cell swords to kidnap Wuklamat and steal her keystones. But perhaps the most egregious cheat of all happens in Urkopacha. This is when Bakul Jaja unleashes magic to break the ice imprisoning Valigarmanda. It's a legendary beast that even the great Galul Jaja couldn't slay in his prime. A rampage from it would cause chaos and result in countless lives lost. The Yakhoi ask why he'd do such a deed, and he states plainly, for the throne. The cherry on top, he doesn't even help stop Villagarmanda, so he's the only claimant not to get a keystone here. Bakul Jaja is paired with Saralja to prepare traditional Shabrao cuisine. They fail, and the former is once again forced to scheme to get a keystone. That drives him to kidnap Wuklamat's biological father and hold him for ransom. And in true cowardly villain fashion, he tells the Warrior of Light not to interfere, probably because he knows we'd make him eat dirt. But this is a pivotal point for Wuklamat. She steals her resolve and overcomes an obstacle she failed at before. Bakul Jaja is beaten, Wuklamat's father is safe, and the Blessed Chosen flees in tears and shame. At this point in the story, Bakul Jaja is as flat as it gets in terms of characterization. He's a bumbling buffoon intent on stopping the protagonist for very shallow reasons. Promotional material for the game and the story itself builds Bakul Jaja up as the primary antagonist for Dawn Trail. Even Zoralja has shown brief moments of promise, unlike the Blessed Chosen who has zero redeeming qualities. He's a grade A jerk and that's about it. The trip to Mamuk is a pivotal point in Bakul Jaja's story. 
The city and its people help us connect with their champion on an emotional level that wasn't possible before. We learn of his parents, how they tailor-made the final feat to guarantee his success, and the immense pressure he's under to succeed. His father, Zorilja, offers him another opportunity to cheat by taking the stones he missed. But surprisingly, he refuses, acknowledging that he couldn't beat Wuklamat before, so he can't take them now. His father's words clearly cut him deep. You are as useless as your siblings. A failure. Leave and never return! You have no place here! <sighs> Let's go, brother. We are led to the Sky Deep Sonote by his mother, Milalja. We find him there reflecting on his failures. She tells us it was always his place to come and cry. It's in this haunting cavern that Bakul Jaja can be with his own kind. Remember, he's the best hope that Mamuk and the Mamalja have at reclaiming their former glory, thanks to the two-headed Mamalja inherently having incredible physical and magical power. Bakul Jaja is even described as such when you reach Mamuk and speak to the other members of his clan, including his parents. That being said, Bakul Jaja is also suffering under carrying the burdens of an entire race of people on his back. That's because this place is a tomb. Vessels carrying two-headed Mamolja children who never had the strength to hatch. Bakul Jaja is a miracle child. One in only a hundred survive. Brothers and sisters sacrificed for the glory of Mamuk. Of course it's horrible! It's an atrocity we can never take back! Those children died so that we could live. So we had to succeed, no matter what. To fail would mean it was all for nothing. Nothing. But I did fail. I squandered their sacrifice. This trauma explains much about his outward bravado. He's been put in a nearly impossible situation. He must become Don's servant. Beneath his arrogance is someone really suffering. The burden of his family, his homeland, the knowledge of who died so he could live. I, I should never have been born. You're wrong. You didn't ask to be born as you are, and you are responsible for your siblings' deaths. The people obsessed with blessed siblings are. They made their choices, but they don't make yours. Since when do you let others push you around, Bakul Jaja? What do you want? Say it! I want it to end. I don't want any more to die. Wuklamat, like she has for many others in her journey, connects with Bakul Jaja. The people of Mamuk are at their emotional and mental breaking points. Together, they will break the cycle. She, Kona, and their companions find a way to bring fertility to the Mamolja land and offer new prosperity. Bakul Jaja even gives an inspiring speech to his kinsmen, vowing to be the last of the Mamuk blessed siblings. He says, we can't change the past, but we can work toward a better future. This honesty about his past and fears offers us a new side of the Bakul Jaja we were introduced to. He's still gruff, but he's kind. The Blessed Chosen throws his support behind Wuklamad as Dawn Servant. We even see him smiling and cheering when she's crowned. He takes this newfound commitment very seriously. Bakul Jaja has a great moment when Jiralja's forces attack Tuliolal. A child is backed into a corner by automaton soldiers, but the boy is saved due to his intervention, buying time for the warrior and others to head to the palace. The man who once said weaklings should be exiled from the city now risks his life to protect them, 
What a way to clean up your act. Thank you. Uh, save the fakes. Just get to safety. But Cool Jaja serves as a foil to Zoralja in the Dawn Trail narrative. Both are burdened by the legacy of their fathers. The former starts with no regard for morality, willing to win the throne at any cost. Zoralja was the well-respected leader of the Landsguard, but as the story progresses, he's bitter and overcome by jealousy. Zoralja loses his morality and the respect his people had for him. But Kul Jaja gains a newfound sense of morality and earns the respect of the people he used to spite. He even takes over the Landsguard at the end of the 7.0 story. Zoralja needs to be Dawn's servant because of his wounded ego. But Kul Jaja doesn't need to be Dawn's servant anymore. That's because he found a new way to help his people prosper. Zoralja's journey ends with him as a patricidal traitor. But Kul Jaja becomes a war hero. <laughs> that was a near thing. Are you all right? You saved your life. <laughs> yes, I know. Don't squander it. I never thought you of all people would come to my rescue. Pakul Chacha. Thank you. Oh, still rings odd in my ears. The thank yous. But I could get used to it. The narrative gives this character a solid arc. Yes, we have to acknowledge that his turn from bad to good was a bit abrupt. Some of his cheating you can excuse, but the releasing of Valagarmanda could have had catastrophic consequences. And in all fairness, Bakul Jaja recognizes this and tells Wuklamat he doesn't expect forgiveness for his actions. And some of his behavior can probably be attributed to his age. Many characters refer to him as boy and talk about how young he is. Sure, his size and attitude might lead you to believe he's an adult, but remember, he runs off in tears after Wuklamat defeats him, and he flinches when his father scolds him. Take all of that into consideration, and his pivot in morality doesn't seem so unbelievable. I'll admit that Bakul Jaja was my least favorite character as I went through Dawn Trail's first half, but his journey grew on me, and now I quite like him. He's kind of like a Sour Patch Kid. First they're sour, and then they're sweet. It also helps that Javier Prusky did a phenomenal job bringing this character to life in the English cutscenes. And I think it's pretty funny that his popularity has exploded. But I really want to know what you think about Bakul Jaja's journey. Talk to me in the comments. Also let me know what Dawn Trail topics you want to see me cover next. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe so you know when new ones come out. Take care, warriors, and I'll see you next time.